clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Yeah, it was, supposed to was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour, and Eucharistic Thanksgiving that we can break bread and whine about the state of the world. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Yeah, more than the Thursday today. Uh, but before we start, uh, we are dedicating this show uh, to our colleague, uh, Evan Gershkovich, who remains locked up in a Russian jail on trumped-up charges of espionage when, in fact, he was just doing his job as an excellent uh, Wall Street yeah. Journal reporter. Uh, today, we calculate that he has been behind bars uh, unjustifiably for one year. Some people are saying it's till tomorrow because of leap year, but we this is one year behind bars for an innocent man who doesn't deserve... In his early 30s, yeah. you know, uh, great that, journalist, we, much loved. We get part of this company, Wall Street Journal, same, same company as Talk TV, got our badges on, we stand with Evan, and Evan, for what it's worth, this show is Just for you, it. and we hope that they let you out very, very soon. That's a picture of all the staff here at Talk TV Towers, from all the newspapers and the television channels, the radio channels, all gathered together in our foyer. Uh, we stand with Evan. This was a picture taken, uh, I think it was yesterday. So uh, we call upon... Uh, Vladimir Putin to let this man out. He hasn't done anything wrong and you embarrass yourself, you humiliate yourself with these ludicrous trumped up charges against the man who was just doing his job reporting for the Wall Street Journal. Evan Gershkovich, we stand with you. Let's, uh, uh, let's, uh, so, um, yeah, so uh, terrible plight for... Yeah, no, it's absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? The fact that poor Evan uh, was just going about his job, going to Russia um, to do reporting, uh, had a, a, a... Actually, he's part Russian, can speak Russian, and had uh, every right as a journalist to go and be there. This isn't anything about Evan's done. Of course it's not. This is Putin game-playing, trying to use him as a political pawn in some sort of tawdry prisoner exchange. And uh, one year in prison for that man. Thankfully, when we saw images of him, both sort of, you know, heartbreaking and and heartwarming because he looks like he's in OK health, although it's a pretty grim Moscow prison where people are often held in solitary confinement. I think he's got a cellmate, though. But um, fingers crossed, we get Evan back soon and we're going to carry on reporting his story until he can tell it himself. Uh, yep, this is for you, Evan. Uh, now, first of all, uh, once again, the migrant crisis looms large in the news agenda. Guess what? A record number of migrants for the first three months of any year have now crossed the channel. So this is, for the first three months of this year, or indeed any year, this is the highest number of people who have crossed the channel illegally. Uh, we have uh, 4,644 people have now crossed the channel this year. Uh, guess what? Uh, you'll like this on Tuesday... Will I? On, no, you won't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on Tuesday alone, uh, 338 more people arrived in seven boats and were, of course, taken to hotels and, <laughs> were, and, uh, and welcomed with the warm embrace of a nation that is completely all at sea about a migrant crisis it cannot solve. Well, it could solve it very easily. Yeah. This is like come summer, it's going to be like the blimmin' queues for the log flume at Alton Towers. Yeah. They're just going to be lining up. They're going to have to put that sort of zigzag queuing tape around the place and have people wait their turn to get on a dinghy and come over. Just stop them, physically stop them. What annoys me about this is you know full well, I know full well, you at home know full 
well that the very first country to do this, if it's Italy, if it's us, you know, whoever does it and just goes, had enough, we're physically stopping the boats, they're not entering our territorial waters, every other country will follow suit and there you go, the problem is solved overnight. We should be the ones to do it. Why? Because the English Channel is very, very small. It's the easiest and safest place to intercept and given it's the busiest shipping channel in the world, it's probably a good idea to do that anyway. We need to crack on and do this. The world will look at us and go, thank goodness for Britain leading the way. Yeah, but here's the problem. We won't do oh, it we because won't. Rishi's scared of all those globalist organisations that he wants to be a member of. He spends all his time worrying about Britain's reputation on the international stage. This is what Westminster politicians do. The rest of us live in the real world. We don't care about our reputation no. on the international stage. What? We want to stop our reputation you, the, on the boats international coming stage across the channel. It's looking ludicrous, like we can't defend ourselves. Just our reputation ridiculous. is in tatters because Just of this nonsense. Ridiculous. Utter farce. Uh, now, uh, this is bad news for Labour. A police in Manchester who decided that there was no reason to investigate Angela <laughs> Rayner, the deputy Labour leader, uh, for the sale of her house, her second home some years ago, have now changed their mind and are reassessing their decision. So it looks as if Angela Rayner could be yeah. fully investigated uh, for what is uh, alleged to be improprieties with... Uh, she said that she wasn't living at this house and therefore when she sold it, uh, she wasn't liable for capital gains tax. Uh, well, all the neighbours say that she was. Uh, so she denies yeah. she's done anything wrong. The police now are officially well, investigating her. This will be bad news. There. She had moved in with her husband who'd also bought his right to buy property. So she wasn't living in that house. She should have paid capital gains tax. She therefore lied about where she well, was this, living this for the all purpose of voting. Well, hang on a second. If this on. is true, it is fraud. And if Mrs Miggins did this, she would be investigated and have to pay a massive bill back. So, no, absolutely, it doesn't matter whether you're a deputy leader of a political party or not, if you faked where you're living to not pay tax... If, if yeah, if you faked where you're living to not pay tax, that, my friend, should be yeah. investigated. You've got to straight, End yeah. of. Yeah, well, that's, that's good. The police are investigating. But good. we've got to stress that Angela Rayner uh, insists she did nothing wrong. Uh, so we will watch that story like a hawk. Don't worry about that. Uh, meanwhile, bad news for Rishi. I mean, the Tories are never particularly popular in <laughs> Wales, but things are happening west oh, yeah, of the border. Uh, because uh, it, a recent poll reveals that uh, the Tories have plummeted to their lowest vote share ever in Welsh land and uh, in some areas uh, Reform UK are now either level pegging or within 1%, one percent yeah, one point beating. of the Tories. Some polls are showing us, uh, I shouldn't say us, them, uh, Reform UK, yeah, yeah. the party impartial that I am journalist. impartially uh, just, you know, <laughs> think is an interesting news story. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, though it shows Reform UK actually beating the Tories in Wales and also actually if you do break down polling of some of the latest that have come out uh, today in fact, mm -hmm. uh, apparently Reform UK are a piece with the Tories at 21% in the Midlands, beating the Tories in the northeast of England and actually across the north in general. Uh, of those who voted the Conservative Party in 2019, the male cohort of that demographic now support reform more than the Conservatives. They're in trouble. Yeah, I think And I had are. a little chat with my mate Nigel this morning and uh, watch this face. That would be Nigel Farage, who uh, I'm hoping, and I'm sure a lot of other people are hoping, uh, will come out of the woodwork and uh, campaign full-time for Reform UK. I don't have any skin in the game either way, but I think that will make the competition extremely this, interesting. This is remarkable. Where Nigel Farage-led parties have uh, done really well before, I'm thinking sort of, you know, 2013 to 2015 with UKIP, and then, of course, 2019 with uh, the Brexit Party. The difference then is we had a very strong Conservative Party. So the Brexit Party and UKIP would have been polling around the same as the Conservatives now, but the Conservative par Party were a lot better. Um, but now we've got a very weak Conservative Party we, th th there's, nothing's even happened yet. There's no election, there's no campaigning. I still think reform is a name that a lot of people dotted around the country haven't even heard of when you do brand recognition by household. So I think there's a lot of mileage in this story. Okay. And if I was the Conservative Party, I would be in a blind panic. And if I was the Labour Party, I wouldn't be resting on my laurels either because I'm pretty sure reform are coming after your voters as well. Yeah, indeed. Uh, meanwhile, more bad news for Rishi. The UK, according to the Office 
uh, of national statistics is still in recession. Uh, revised figures this morning show that the economy uh, was in fact still shrinking at the end of 2023 because we'd heard that we were only actually in recession for like one month and, of January and then we came out of it. But according to these new figures, uh, we're still in it. It won't make a blind bit of difference to your lives, uh, but uh, these are the numbers that the ONS and the government uh, kind of... Just function. consistently bad news for the economy, yeah. economy that is absolutely on its knees. It's beyond on its knees now. It's lying on its stomach, being dragged around the streets on a rope. It's an absolute mess. Nothing is working. Nobody's at work. I can vouch for that. I got on the tube today and got to sit down on both of my journeys, which is rare, because people have gone, oh, I get four days off at Easter. I get Good Friday and Easter Monday on May. We'll take the Thursday off and work from home as well. There is a feckless lack of industry in this country. No one's doing anything about it. And this is why our economy has gone to the dogs. Here's, here's a way, here's a way, here's a way you could improve going, our economy. Mind. Here's a way we could improve our economy. Uh, make working from home illegal. Uh, ban it. And then companies would start to make money and stupid bosses would stop conning themselves that uh, when their employees are at home I on work. a Friday or a Thursday they're and they're watching Netflix, that they're actually working. I, I they say, work actually, from home. working from home is far more profitable. No, no it's, it's not. not. What do you think we are, stupid? I, I worked from home for a couple of years. I was a freelancer. I wasn't employed by a company. This is way before working from home was a thing. I did it because I was a freelancer. And I'll tell you what, I just spent most of the day in my pyjamas, put a few loads of washing on, caught up with my paperwork. You don't work. That's the whole point. That's why people don't go to the well, office and stay at home, because they work shy. Well, I worked at home for about 20 years as a freelancer, both in America and here. And if you don't work, you don't get paid. So that really does galvanise your attitude to work. Uh, these people are getting paid for not working. They're watching Netflix. All you bosses are letting them yeah, do that. Yeah, you turn around half the you pay. Are ju you're gullible yeah. idiots. You really well, are. work from home, fine, but you only get paid half your They're salary. not working from home. They're not doing any. They're watching Netflix. Right. Or us. Uh, right. <laughs> Uh, this is shocking. The Times uh, reporter, Paul, the excellent reporter Paul Morgan Bentley, has uh, spent months working undercover as an assistant prison guard at Bedford Prison. And what he has found out is absolutely shocking. Let's have a look at uh, his video. The prison has airport style security on the front gate, which should mean that everyone entering is searched thoroughly for contraband, including drugs and weapons. However, when I arrived for my shifts, I found this was often not happening. I decided to keep a video diary. This morning, I arrived at the prison. There was literally no one on security. There was that one OSG at reception, showed her my ID, and then I walked through. So Bedford's got 400 prisoners in it. It is a well, category... That's what they think. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're all <laughs> walking out. Uh, the, the, it's a category B prison, so there's the murderers, rapists, there's some serious criminals in there. And uh, Paul Morgan Bentley uh, applied to become an assistant uh, a prison warden through an agency. Uh, when he was, a, they said just a curse. He said just a cursory check would have proved he was a Times reporter. They didn't, <laughs> yet, so he walked straight into the job. Uh, regularly walked all the way into the prisons. No security checks working. Nobody manning the security machines. Uh, and uh, was warned by one of his colleagues when he arrived. Uh, you've got to be careful here. This prison is suffering from a pandemic of open doors. And the last person to to escape from Bedford Prison, uh, which, by the way, is awash with drugs, as you'd expect, uh, actually just walked out of his cell, walked through about 10 or 11 open doors, got to the gate, and the gate guard thought he must be a, a, a visitor visiting a prisoner, said, waved Bye. to him, and he walked out. So he literally I mean, walked out of the prison. That's basically just a hotel for ne'er-do-wells, isn't it, that we're paying for? And this is just the state of Britain today. Yet another example. We can't control our borders. We can't lock our prisons. I mean, are we doing anything right? We're basically just anarchic at this point. Nothing's working. No one's doing anything about it. We may as well just give up and let all the sort of wrong run loose and just hide in our homes pretending we're working and wait for it all to clear because no one has got the guts or the gall or the common sense to actually get a grip on any of the problems in this country. Yeah, Ridiculous. And, uh, uh, he worked there for eight days and uh, assistant prison guards are not supposed to have contact with the prisoners. He said within about an hour he found himself sort of chatting to a whole group of prisoners. As he said, Hanging he out. walked into that jail, no security checks, he could have been full of drugs, heroin, spice or whatever, 
handed it to them, and no one would have been any the wiser. And trust me, that is happening on a daily basis oh, at Bedford Prison. today, isn't it? Basically, uh, and uh, that is a snapshot of our prison bonkers. system today. Really, really Talking worrying. Talking about bonkers, Kev. I love this yeah, story. Go on, do you okay. Okay, there is a uh, Just Stop Oil campaigner with pink hair called Phoebe Plummer. Uh, she was a public school educated, of, of course. course. She was. Uh, her big thing is she goes to MPs' private homes and delivers letters saying, Save the Planet. Well, she glues herself to things, throws. Yeah, but her main thing the is she posts these letters everyone. to MPs. So she's on bail for doing that because she's kind of invading their privacy. She's on bail for her various offences to do with her campaigning for emergency. Uh, climate change action and anyway so should, she should watch so, him? well so she goes to uh west streeting the yeah. uh um the shadow health secretary's home uh let's have a look at uh, <laughs> phoebe's triumphant video which she immediately posted onto social media Go take on, it away phoebe. phoebe this is uh the letter delivering to west streeting it appears that there's no police here this time maybe they've realized that there's not much harm in just delivering a letter to your mp it's what they've always asked us to do after all should i go hang myself in for breaking bail i mean that seemed pretty harmless but it was worth arresting me for last time. Oh, what, what a mean. brave what? young woman saving Guess the world. Guess what, though? So she posts it. that that video. Look at me, you know, I'm breaking bail. I've I'm done it before. I'm doing it again. West Streeting. West Streeting's response on social media was TV gold. Absolutely priceless. It was just this. Hi, Phoebe. That's not my house. Hey! <laughs> hey! You got well, the wrong it. house, you wrong absolute idiot. There's such morons. They've all got mad names. And I want to ask you a couple of questions. I think Go this on, is then. very important. Go on, then. Okay, first of all, Kev, what is your favourite herb or spice? Uh, God. Oregano. Oregano. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, where's, where's your last place you visited? The last place I visited? Yeah. Uh, Hampstead Heath. There you go. So your Just Stop Oil activist name is Oregano Hampstead. That works. Hey! That does work. Find out your own using that special protocol. Sorry about the oregano. That's a, a, a kind of a like residual Hampstead. effect of living in America. I still say trunk. Actually, it could be Hampstead trunk and hyphen hood for heath, couldn't it? Yeah. Oregano Hampstead hyphen yeah. heath. They call it, yeah. Great name. Uh, oregano. That's what yeah. they call er oregano in America. I would be saying Lanzarote. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, now, uh, do you remember the Spanish soccer boss, uh, the president yeah, of the Spanish FA? Mm -hmm. Now, Luis mm -hmm. Rubiales, I don't think he cloaked himself in glory. But it wasn't his finest moment. You remember uh, that when Spain uh, won the World Cup, uh, he sort of leapt at the captain and kissed her. Planted a uh, smack. Don't go around and kiss people on the of lips course. when they've not of invited course. you to do so. Of that course. is not good. That is not allowed under any circumstances. But prison? Are you kidding me? This is just what people do in football, isn't it? You know, you get the the people, the coaches, whatever you've got, the managers going and grabbing their star players and like kissing their heads and ruffling their heads and oh, I don't know, smacking them on the bottom. But this is utterly insane to actually try and incarcerate this man for that offence. He's been through the mill already, lost his job, didn't he? And uh, all over the front pages of every single newspaper. He's been through enough. Prison, grow up. Yeah, it was Jenny Hermosa, the team captain. And at first she said there was nothing wrong with what happened. Then she sort of changed uh, her But uh, either, uh, either way, this nobody is condoning what Robialis no. did. But is that worth two and a half years in prison? That's me it too. That is me too of gone real mad. Crime. Me too yeah, gone mad. That it really is. It really I'd is. Say so. uh, now, uh, here's a story that's got you all worked up. Uh, if you go down to London, central London, Oxford Street and uh, Regent Street, the big shopping streets, massive thoroughfare. Uh, they put all the Christmas the lights country. up and they put Easter lights up, except they're not Easter lights, no. are they? I no. think we've got a picture. They're Ramadan lights. No! Stop it! This is just wrong. It's Easter, right? Today is Eucharist, Maundy Thursday. Tomorrow is Good Friday. On Monday, we celebrate the resurrection of our Saviour, Lord Jesus Christ. What a great day and moment in history that was that changed the course of the world for the better. We're a Christian country. Easter is the most important festival. Forget Christmas. This is the big one. It's not about chocolate eggs. It's about something far more important than that to Christians. And look, this
This is the capital city of the United Kingdom, a Christian country. That is still our state religion, whether you follow it or not. And we've got a big Islamic festival being celebrated on the main, most important thoroughfares. Uh, this is just insane. What message is this saying to Christians? What message is this sending to the world? And I'd like to point out, I got no problem. If you're a Muslim, practice Islam. I respect religions. I am religious. Everyone should have the freedom to practice their religion. But if you go to Iraq, where once there were millions of Christians, you'll find there's about 300,000 these days. If you go to Syria, the Yazidi Christians have been murdered and chased out. If you go to Turkey, where once one third of the population was Christian, it's about 5% now. Christians are being har harried out of other countries, slaughtered. They have to leave in fear of their lives. Old Abdul Azadi knows this because he fakes being a Christian to prevent going back to Afghanistan. They don't let us put our Christmas lights up, do they? Why can't we just have Christianity not eroded in this country, but respected because it's a huge part of our legacy. It underpins our cultural values, whether you worship it or not, doesn't matter. It is what makes us the country we are today. This is insane. It's insulting. It's Easter. Get these lights down. Stop it. Could you just run us past, past that again? One more time, please. I'm just so fed up. I've ranted about this already, that I feel that there's one religion being forced down our throats. You know, yesterday was Holi, the big Hindu festival of spring, where they chuck coloured paints at each other. I used to live in India. Great festival. Where did. was that? I didn't see that. That wasn't celebrated. How many countries Why? haven't you lived in? No, about three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, well, the point... The, I've lived see, I don't... I, don't I mean, I, I don't much care about Christianity or anything like that. I don't believe in it all. But uh, I do feel, I look at that, uh, and I absolutely take your point, I look at that and thought, well, aren't they, is somebody stealing our country or something? Yeah. I mean, why is there a, a, a big festival of lights above our two major shopping uh, thoroughfares, uh, celebrating a religion that isn't this country's religion. I mean, yeah. it's kind of During weird. the most important festival of this country's religion, yeah. it is the constant creep, 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 erosion of Christianity, yeah. mock it, kick it in the shins, try and get rid of it, destroy our culture and our social fabric in the process. But do you know what? Let's just usher in another religion uh, and use that one instead. And by the way, that was mm, the mm, Muslim mm, mayor... Mm, not uh, under my That was watch. the Muslim mayor, Sadiq Khan, opening those lights back in Fine, March. open your lights, but, do uh, what you anyway, like. Anyway, 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 let's Christians. move on, let's move on. Uh, I think you made your point. Uh, very well, by the way. Uh, Clapham chemical attacker, uh, that guy, uh, Abdul Azizi, uh, Azidi, of course, who impressed all of those religious people and the Home Office and yeah. that judge uh, because of his sincere conversion to Christianity. Uh, guess what kind of a burial he had. Uh, we've got a picture here of uh, Abdul Azidi, Azidi being buried in a Muslim funeral. Right. Unbelievable. It's, it's, He's a Liar. Well, it makes an absolute mockery out of our judicial system and the judge who decided that he shouldn't be able to go home to Afghanistan because he's a Christian is going to be tortured. Ah. Ha ha, absolute useless piece of work that judges. And what the question I've got, right, is Abdul Azadi's friends and family probably didn't stump up the cash for this. There was a huge backlash in the mosque about this guy being given a Muslim funeral because loads of people well, said, he said, well, he Christian. said he was a Christian. So who paid for it? Because normally when friends and family don't want to pay for your funeral, it comes down to the local authority. That's right, the taxpayer. That's right, me and you. I'd be interesting to find out if we stumped up. Maybe, maybe, for that. maybe it was the Probably millionaire did. businessman who funded the Ramadan lights oh, yeah, in he Oxford owns Street. Half of London, yeah. that geezer, uh, right, uh, but uh, we don't know that, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, now uh, the Euros are coming up this week. Uh, this is uh, this summer, I should say. England go off to Europe, uh, having uh, not beaten Brazil and just about managed to draw with Belgium. So it's looking bad there. I'll tell you, uh, if we don't win the Euros, it will be. Gareth Southgate's uh, fault and we'll finally get on board uh, just exactly how talented that guy is as a football manager. We win or he's a loser. Uh, anyway, the football fans, the England fans who will, of course, descend upon the European continent in their many thousands have been warned by the nanny state foreign office be careful of the German beer. <laughs> it's very strong. Oh, my God. You think God. the British can't drink? You think the British <laughs> don't know about strong beer? It's our beer. national sport. Why, why are you wasting our money? We might not warning be... Warning football fans right. that German beer's a bit strong. Nanny state 
nonsense. We might not be good at sinking balls in the back of nets, but we know how to sink our pints. That is the one yeah, thing that British yeah, football yeah, fans exactly. do well. Yeah, we can drink the Germans under the table. Yeah, we can. And beat them in wars. Right, uh, the Australian team, uh, the Australian uh, women's football team and Australian... I don't think you can call it the women's football uh, team. Uh, like, uh, they're playing in a cup called the Beryl Ackroyd Cup. Uh, the Flying Bats FC won every game they played. They won one game 10-0, and in one game, one of the players scored six goals and guess what uh, they had uh, a series of five transgender players uh, biological males in their team Ridiculous. beating the hell out of every Hello, other women. women's team yeah. in the tournament Pe people people had women pulled out of the tournament because they were getting injured and hurt and actually it's interesting when you look at their logo for the flying bats that sort of harbinger of doom flying over the rainbow flag it tells you all you need to know about that ridiculous movement where it apparently it's perfectly fine to pummel women on a football pitch to you know have men just put on socks and go into their toilets and their bathroom don't worry about women's rights women have been overrated and overprotected for a long time yeah let them get this smashed is... up when they're playing yeah, but this, sport. this, this sort of nonsense matter. is coming to a tournament oh, yeah. near you uh four what do they have six uh trans uh, five transgender players and in one match against women, biological women, they won 10 nil, and one transgender player scored six yeah. goals. That's just ridiculous. Newsflash, men that are stronger ridiculous. than women. Yeah, here, newsflash, that is not fair. That is not sport. We've got to get rid of that. Get rid now, of that. Now, uh, very quickly, Sheridan Smith, uh, she's starring in a West End play called Opening Night, uh, and uh, she, she staggers out every night into the streets of Soho, in character, she plays a sort of washed-up New York actress. Anyway, the play, uh, opening up, is terrible, apparently, and the reviews are unbelievable. And uh, they're suffering from a bit of a problem at this production. The audience members keep falling asleep. Oh, well. Uh, so, uh, great admirer of Sheridan Smith. I think Sheridan great Smith actress. is awesome, yeah. She's, she's been steered into a terrible production, which, by the way, uh, apparently is very misogynistic. It has, it has lines in it like, she's not even a housewife. Maybe it's going to be uh, art becoming life, and this is, goes so badly, she actually does become the alcoholic ex-actress. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, that is what this is all about, and it's a big sort of play on a play on a play, and it's very meta, and eventually people are going to look back on it in ten years' time and go, wow, no, they that weren't. was it's, incredible. It's clearly rubbish. Uh, one one theatre-goer, as the curtain fell at the end, said, uh, uh, I don't understand. What just happened? That could be the name of a good TV show, couldn't no, it? Look like uh, right, let's just very quickly. Uh, it is, of course, a Monday, Thursday, tomorrow, it Friday, it's Easter. And, of course, in the great tradition of this uh, annual festival, it's going to pour with rain and be hey. freezing cold. Uh, already, unbelievably, apparently, well, it's a snowing in That's Devon. what they say, but I check the weather reports because I'm going down to the south coast to see my brother tomorrow. Where it's and, very windy. Uh, well, I think it looks like it's going to be okay. Anyway, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothes. I think there's a lot of bad weather around. I hate bad weather. Sadly, though, Alex, we have come to the end of this excellent show. Join us a bit later, one o'clock. You know what for. Russell Ooh, coming up. Up next Russell. is Peter Carbwell. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. 
What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! <laughs> it's carry on what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> there was a suggestion by some that maybe it was